In the world of Colorado high school girls soccer, few teams have been as dominant as the Grandview Wolves. Under the leadership of coach Terry Wood, the Grandview girls soccer program has amassed four state titles in five years, starting in 2015. Their state championship win against Broomfield became a stepping stone in what would become the legacy it is today. The program has gone on to produce over 19 All-State players, including two players of the year with Casey Johnston and Taylor Parker, as well as continued achievements in soccer alumni Natalie Beckman, who was the 48th NWSL draft pick for the Portland Thorns last December. How long have you been playing soccer? I've been playing since I was four or five and I'm now 21, almost 22. So like 18 years almost. So as a kid, I know, I'm assuming you probably always had that dream, but did you know that you would get to the point that you are now? No, honestly, I'd, I had no idea that I was going to play professional soccer. Um, I think you always like as a kid, you're kind of like, oh, yeah, that'd be cool. But then like you kind of hit like middle school, high school and you're like, I just want to play college. Like, I feel like that'd be a great point to start at. And then in college, I'm kind of like, I don't want to be done after this. Like, I want to keep going. So I think. I started to realize that I wanted to play professional soccer in college. I know I saw the Instagram post that you made in November saying you wanted to continue your career. Did you think that you would get to this point even then? Honestly, I had no idea. I had no idea. I think you obviously like hope that like you can stay in the U.S. and play, but I also knew how high of a level it was and how competitive it is to be able to even like make a team and make a roster here. So I did not know if I was going to get that chance. And so I was also at the time, I was waiting for the NWSL draft because I didn't know what was going to come of that. And if I didn't get drafted, I was probably going to look for overseas options just so that I could continue to play. How much do you still keep in touch with all of your club teammates from years ago? We actually try and do like a, for my club team, we try and do like a dinner, <laughs> like at least once a year, maybe twice. And it's just so fun, like all Snapchat, and like text like other people and other players just to see how they're doing. Going back to high school, how much do you think playing with those girls on club helped either build rivalries between teams or helped contribute to the success on high school team? I mean, honestly, my high school experience, like I got very lucky. We had amazing players that were from ECNL teams. And honestly, like I got to play with some of my club teammates like Morgan Zarka and Lindsay Jennings and Grace, obviously. Um, and I was just, I'm thankful that like I got to play with them. And then there were obviously other girls on my club team that were on different teams. And of course they want to have those bragging rights when they go back to club. It's like Alicia Garcia was at Cherokee Trail and that was always a big rivalry to us. And we'd always kind of talk to each other about it and how we were looking forward to playing each other. You get high school ones and you'll never ever forget your high school teammates and things that have happened. And so that was, a tradition that we tried to do with our retreats, with all the little, you know, the silly songs that they sing and the games that they play and all of the, and the prayers and the, and the things that they do together, you know, you don't get that in club and you don't get to walk the halls with the people that you play with. And so just to, to listen to the girls and try to make it a place that they could find success and they could find, they could be proud of what they were doing, but yet respect everybody else along the way. How did Coach Wood influence you in comparison to those club coaches? What was nice about Wood is that like she was kind of a constant, like whereas like club coaches like could change every year, like Wood was always there. Like it was very like you could depend on her and like she was there all four years. And I think she also realized that like she only had us for a couple of months. So whereas like the club coach, like they kind of have you year round. And so I think she like focused on like obviously winning because we wanted to win, but also like creating a good environment for us to like be ourselves and also like enjoy it. Your freshman year, you were one of, I think four freshmen to make varsity. Um, yeah. And that was like unheard of, like no one, like in the previous years, like she'd maybe taken two. And so there was a group of me, Ali Zare, Lindsay Jennings and Morgan Zarka, and we were all kind of like, Oh my god like some of us might be making jv which is fine like totally fine but we were also like oh my god like that is crazy and there were four freshmen then that i had that nobody realized what i had in those four freshmen that first year and then and they just kept saying you know what we come to practice to get better every single day um, and natalie was a special player um, she did 
all kinds of things um, I talk about with players, whether they're experienced players or even newer players about, you know, she, she was one that took the soccer balls almost every day so she could work on them. She always had a soccer ball at her feet, always working on just her touch, juggling the ball, just doing those things. She went to camps in the summer that were for younger kids, but she just continued working. And it was just a constant, constant thing. And then we all got picked and it was an amazing experience for all of us. I actually didn't know this. At the end of that season, you were ranked number one in the nation. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of wild. I knew we were always like kind of high in the national rankings, but I never knew like where we kind of fell, to be honest. Even winning state, how did you think you would get that far? in that 2015 season? As a freshman, you kind of have no idea what's going on. So you're like, I'm just here for a good time. Like, this has been great. And like, we had so many talented players that it was like, like, I remember we did this like retreat at the beginning and they like had us all together and they're like, what's like our objective as like a team? And I think Maddie Ledgejack was like, she was the starting goalie at the time. And she was like, well, obviously it's to win state. I think our, our run started with a young lady named Maddie Lesjack. Um, she was she was the heart and soul and the leader that said, you know what, I'm tired of losing to Mountain Vista. And like they had never really had that like standard. And so I think even just like talking about it and like bringing it into like focus, that like, hey, we can do this. Like this isn't like some impossible thing that like doesn't like happen for us. Like I just think that it was awesome that like we got to talk about about it and bring like our focus into it and be like, we can achieve this. And a lot of kids want to come to high school because it's fun to play. And they said, no, we're here to do a job and it's to win another state title and to, sh and to keep establishing what Grandview is. That was the program's first state title since 2008. Mm -hmm. How did you kind of use that to propel you through the next season? Well, then it was kind of like, we did it once, why not do it again kind of thing. Um, and we also, like going into like my sophomore year, we lost a couple like bigger names of like Maddie Lesjack, obviously, Christina Salazar. Uh, I think Bailey Cook left that year because she graduated early to go to college. But like we still had most of our starters returning and most of our starters were honestly still pretty young. So like we felt like we like were in a really good spot to do it again. So I think we were just excited to like continue building on what we had created and to try and do it again and show that like we are that dominant. Determination. Um, this program has been built on tradition and determination and um, there was a lot of pride in the program and you know, when I took over, um, we had won one state championship. And the group of kids that actually won that one state championship years ago should have won two or three. Um, and they just never committed. And then we kept just falling short. Before we won our first one, we kept falling short in like the second or third rounds. And there just wasn't quite the commitment. And so, with the class of kids that won the first one in our little string of them that we won, there just became this attitude of, we're gonna do everything we can, and we're gonna commit to high school, and we're gonna commit to what we're doing and to each other. You meet Broomfield again in Final Four. Did, did you have any expectations for that game? I mean, we knew it was gonna be a good game because obviously we had played them the year before, and they've honestly always done such a great job. I think our one thing that like always kind of set us apart from them was what, first like we had an amazing team um, and very talented individuals, but we also like, and I give uh, Coach Wood a lot of credit for this, we'd have a very good schedule like out of conference. And honestly, I think our in-conference games were stronger than what Broomfield was getting. So I think that almost gave us an advantage of like, we were constantly having to play in like these semi-final type games because the competition was always so good that we played against. So I think we were used to that level of play. Pete Broomfield, you're going to Dick Sporting Goods Park again, chance for a back-to-back -back title. What was going through your head? I think that was when we played Vista. And honestly, at that point, it was kind of like, we just wanted to win it for the seniors because we had a pretty big group of seniors that like were going to be graduating. And like for me, it was, let's win back to back for them because this is really important to them. So I think it was just playing for them in that moment. 
That's a and good honestly, mindset. state games are always kind of a little crazy and like it's just all adrenaline the whole, I think it's 80 minutes in high school, so the whole 80 minutes. And so you never know what's gonna happen and you just pray that it's gonna fall your way. <laughs> You had that heartbreaking loss in the semis your junior year. That was that was a rough one when we lost that one um, in PKs in the semifinals. And then the team that beat us went on to handily win um, the state championship. And in that game, if you were there, um, we were we dominated and we we had so many shots that went off crossbars, hit just wide, and they had like no shots on goal. Can you walk me through those PKs in 2017? Um, the, so we had um, all returners taking them with the um, one that had never, ever missed PK taking it last. Um, and <laughs> this is hard. And um, the people, so um, we... I don't know how to say it. Um, I think our nerves got to us, and um, and after Lindsay missed and and Gracie was up, um, we were all confident Grace was going to hit it, and then Grace completely miss hit the ball. Um, the other three um, all finished their PKs easily, but we we couldn't rebound. And um, our goalkeeper had done her job and and saved the one that needed to be saved, but. Um, we couldn't make up for two misses. And then the first game of your senior year was Mountain Vista again. Did you kind of see that as getting redemption or anything like that? I mean, honestly, like that junior year, we did have a lot of pressure on us. Like we really, we honestly, we felt it because no team in like 5A had ever won a three-peat. And so we really wanted to achieve that. Obviously, you guys won two two two-peats. Correct. Oh, I was pretty confident that was going to happen. And we were really close, but I think the big thing our senior year, especially with a lot of the seniors that had been on the team for a while, like we realized that like we didn't want that pressure again, like in the sense of we didn't want to constantly have to feel like we needed to be perfect. We wanted to just enjoy it and realize that like it's our last time putting on the shirt for Grandview, so why not? Like represent it well and just smile and realize that like this is still a game. Sorry, I didn't really answer the Mountain Vista part. It was like, yeah, we see them every year. <laughs> They're always a good team. And we honestly, like when we play them in the regular season, it's kind of like, we'll see you again later. So it doesn't necessarily matter how well you do against them because you know you're going to see them again. <laughs> Wood always did a really good job of like scouting out the weather before the game and like would tell us like which way we should go. And, like that's one thing that like I I don't think I've ever really thought about and like she put that like kind of nugget in like to think about like for college and stuff just to be aware of that stuff and so I'm just so glad that like we had the wind and the rain and the sleet like for the second half because we were able to make a comeback from it. 4-2 you beat Vista and then you like full circle ending you're playing Broomfield <laughs> for your final state championship. Is there, were you thinking anything specific? I mean, first, like after, like looking back on it, I'm kind of like, oh, poor Broomfield. They were just so close so many times. <laughs> but I think I went into that game just realizing that like, it's not normal to go to three state championships, much less to win three of them. And I think I was just honestly like trying to soak it all in and realize that like I'll probably never get to play on like Dick Sporting Goods like the field ever again like that's just such a rare occurrence and I'll never be with the same team again so I think I was just trying to live in the moment as much as possible and just be really grateful that like I've had all these extra games in the playoffs and time with the team. You and four other seniors had the fairy tale ending of winning state and graduating within 12 hours. Yes. I think I was so tired that morning that I literally, I burned my head on like a curling iron because I was so out of it trying to get ready to graduate. The state game, like the 4A game is before you and then you play the 5A game. And so like you're there until like probably 11 and it's like not close to like Grandview area. So then you probably get home at like 12 and 
I think we had the early graduation that year. So like we had to be up at like five. So you're like, all right, here we go. But it almost made it sweeter because like they were able to announce it at our graduation ceremony and like kind of like recognize like the team and like how dominant like honestly our age was for soccer and that was really cool. You just said it, you were a very dominant class for the girls soccer program. How did you think it would continue after you graduated? I mean honestly I, I always want them to do well. I think especially when you build like a legacy that we have like we want to like look back and be like oh my gosh like they're still they're still doing it. Like they're still winning games. They're still like bonding as a team. They still have this great like respect towards others and like to see that like your time and effort that like you put into that team is still being placed in the team and not only that but they're growing and they're continuing to make the team better and yeah. How do you think you have shaped the Pride team? Well, I hope that um, what I've left behind is a want a to play high school and to be part of something that's bigger than you are. After six years of major dominance, Coach Wood has retired, leaving her husband to the role. How do you think the new Coach Wood will take on coach? Well, I mean, he's been there with me throughout it. For several years, I was the head coach of the boys, she was the head coach of the girls, and we were each other's assistants. Um, and so it was interesting just the interaction of being the head coach sometimes and being the assistant sometimes. Um, even when he wasn't coaching in the program, when our own kids were young, we couldn't both be head coaches. At the, we couldn't both be coaching all the time because of our children. And so even when I started all of this and he wasn't really coaching here, he's been part of listening to it. He's been helping with the retreats. He's been helping, you know, with all we do. Do you think you have a similar uh, coaching style as it as far as your wife? In some ways, yes, in some ways, no. The style that we played changed every single year because you have to do that based on the players that you have. And so, you know, at one point, I probably had the strongest midfield that nobody could compete with my midfield. Um, and But we didn't really have a great forwards and I had two really strong outside backs. And so we played everything midfield with the backs overlapping and coming up and making finishes and the forwards being holding. Other years, we had some really good forwards who the thing was to get it in behind and have them play. And so he, he's he been part of designing all of that all the way along. It hasn't just been me, you know. Um, and even with his boys this year, I wasn't around, but I was still around the two of us talking together and doing practices and saying, okay, what about this? And at the state final, I walked up and I said, don't you want this player back in the game? And he went and put the player back in the game. and who scored in like 30 seconds after he re-entered. And so, you know, we've been a team and we'll continue to be a team. It, it'll still be, you know, who we are. So you guys are a team. Mm -hmm. So do you think that he has more of, has had more of an impact on you or do you think you have more of an impact on I think in terms of overall relationships and that part, I've had more of an impact on him. My own children look at me and they're like, I cannot believe how many of your former players are contacting you all the time. I think when we've talked about getting down to the nitty gritty, at times he's had more of an impact on me, but I don't know because it's constantly a give and take between the two of us. Well, what do you think about this? What do you think about this? Do you think it'll be a smooth transition? I think it will be just because like I've watched my brother obviously play for Mr. Wood and I think he did a great job with the boys team, especially because they brought home their first state championship, which was amazing to watch. And I was so thankful that like I stayed close to home and could see my brother and Mr. Wood achieve that. And I think Mr. Wood knows soccer just like Mrs. Wood does. And so I think it'll be a smooth transition. I think the girls will respect him and yeah. Where do you see your role being in this program now? The, what I did with the boys is just, you know, I will be here now for a few weeks helping and I'll be coaching as I can, um, but I don't, it, it's, it's Brian's team and I want it to be Brian's team. What do you think makes a good coach? I think there's a lot of things that um, help a coach, um, yeah, I guess, be recognized as a good coach. I think, uh, first of all, knowledge of the game um, and experience in um, playing the game and coaching. Um, I think it takes a long time to become a good coach. Um, I think being flexible with uh, players and athletes, because um, they sometimes have a lot of things on their plate. And so it's, it's finding a balance between 
having expectations and trying to build a team, but at the same time, also trying to support the players and helping them develop as players individually and help them develop as a team. Keep myself busy with um, continuing to try to become a better coach. Um, I spend a lot of time um, watching soccer games. I spend a lot of time um, doing different coaching clinics. Um, I, I went to the national convention a couple weeks ago. Um, I've been part of a couple um, like online um, clinics. Um, so continuing to become better, uh, a better coach, and continuing to learn um, helps me a lot. What are you looking forward to in the players this season? We have a very, very strong foundation, um, very experienced players, players that um, were on the varsity team last year, um, and they, they all play at a really high club level. Um, we have 11, 13, I can't remember exact number, of girls committed to Division One programs. You know, what I look for in those girls is, you know, can we now come together as a team and work together to solve the problems on the field and to, to kind of be successful in this um, very difficult schedule that we have this year. So you obviously won state with the boys. How does that affect your coaching with the girls? It gives me confidence going into this season. Um, I mean, this will be really the first time I've been the head coach of a girls team. Um, and it's a little intimidating. Um, it's intimidating from the fact that, you know, I'm stepping in and taking over for my wife who was very successful. Although there may not be pressure from outside sources, I have that pressure on myself. Um, and so, you know, that makes it a little bit challenging um, that way. At winning the boys program just gives me the, the, the confidence going, yes, I can, I can work with a team and get them to that highest level. Last year was a little bit of a more disappointment, not even making the playoffs. How do you envision you turning around this, the team? I think a lot of it just goes back to, can we come together as a team? I mean, we have, the parts are there. It's just getting the girls to work together and making sure that we're all kind of on the same page. I mean, that was the biggest turnaround we had in the boys season this year is we finally all kind of got on the same page um, and the boys just decided, hey, we're not gonna lose another game this year. Um, and when you get that mentality, it changes you know, how you're doing and what you're doing and how you approach practice every day. So I think the disappointment of not making the playoffs last year will give these girls a lots of incentive to come out and work hard this year. What are your expectations for this season? Um, I mean, I think, you know, we certainly have the potential to, to, to be the league champions. Um, we certainly have the potential to go deep in state, and we certainly have the potential to, to win state. Um, and what a cool thing it would be to win the boys in the fall and the girls in the spring. Um, I was at a meeting a couple weeks ago with the Broomfield coach, and he was, they won state title last year. And we really kind of, as we sat down and talked about the teams in the state this coming um, year, we figure there's about six teams that are really probably ones that are really going to be competing for that. And both Broomfield and us, we felt like those are two of those teams. And so um, it's not going to be easy. We're going to have to work hard. We're going to have to come together as a team, but I think we have that potential. This program carries a legacy. Um, how do you see yourself living up to that legacy? Luckily, I've been a part of a lot of that legacy, so that helps a lot. Um, but at the same time, it's that, you know, that pressure. Maybe it's a real pressure or maybe it's not a real pressure. But, you know, I have that pressure on myself to keep you know, this program, you know, it's one of the top programs in the state. And, you know, as I said before, to give those girls this opportunity to make sure that we are competitive and we're one of those last teams standing. You can never rest. You can never go back, well, we did this last year, so it's going to be easy this year. Every year it gets more and more challenging. Um, to, to reach that legacy, we're just going to have to continue to, to, to think. We're going to have to continue to get better um, and come together as a team. Are there any past or current players that stand out to you? Probably one of them. Um, really cool that Natalie Beckman, um, got um, drafted um, by the Portland Thorns in, in WSL, um, and man, what a what a cool thing for our program, our school, and it's really cool for these girls to actually see um, that you know players that play here at high school have the potential to get to that level. We have Nicole Lubinko, um, who was part of the um, a couple of the state championships team. She's going to be one of the assistants. She's a student teacher here, and she's going to be one of our assistants. I think her legacy and her experience. It's going to be huge for these girls because she, you know, I can't tell them what it's like to be in a girls you know, college program. Yeah. I can't even really tell them how it's to be in a girls high school program as a player. Um, she knows that. She knows, you know, what has gone on here, the, the expectations, and I think it's going to be really huge for her to do that. Um, and then, I mean, I can just make it, I, it could be a long, long list, but those are two um, that I think uh, really stand out. And, you know, and they, start, they started the things with the acronyms those past players did that I think are really important to continue. And then where do you see yourself at the end of the season? Um, I, <laughs> I mean, my dream is 
you know, graduation the next day after the state championship game, celebrating another state championship. And I mean, I can see us doing that, but I just hope that I can help guide them in the right path. We've had a lot of success, um, but I want to continue having success. Um, and it's, it's making sure that we provide a good opportunity for the players that we had in the past, but now continuing to have um, that good opportunity and making sure we're a competitive team, you know, year after year after year. The Grandview Wolves have not only found a continued success under coach Terry Wood, but have also built a legacy worth more than what's just on paper. From four state titles in five years to three Coach of the Year awards, Mrs. Wood leaves behind what she has built and accomplished through her successor. Grandview as a whole now looks to coach Brian Wood to continue building the legacy and triumphs of the Grandview Girls Soccer Program.